10 cats. Mr. Saturday Night, it's Vernon K. Hey, Joe, it's Joe Wilkinson. And their team captain, John Locke. And facing the line, another vowel, please, it's Rachel Riley. Rock and roll comedian, it's Tim Minchin. And their team captain, John Richardson. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 29% of women under 30 say they want the perfect body? Well, here it is, ladies. Come and get it. 79% of people say they feel guilty putting recyclables in the bin. I get round it by placing my recyclables in a paper bag and throwing that in a hedge. <laughs> And the average woman walks 7,000 miles in her lifetime whilst hoovering. And that statistic is brought to you by the year 1953. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. John's team, what do you think people have been talking about this week? Oh, it's got to be X Factor, hasn't it? Oh, uh, X Factor. Who, who's your favourite? Um, I like the two groups that are left and Sophie Habibis. I think they're really good. I like her name, Habibis. Yeah. She's good. Habibis, it sounds like an excellent chain of hotels. Oh, what are you saying, the Habibis? <laughs> <laughs> the makeup's gone a little bit crazy and all the clothes and they've kind of turned them all into Lady Gaga. It's a bit weird this year. You have to put a lot of makeup on and things to distract from their personalities, though. Because <laughs> that's human. What are you saying? <laughs> 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 My big bugbear with the X Factor is created a generation of British audiences who can't hear a sentence and not react to it. You're not allowed to just say, well, I thought it was quite good, but you need to get better. And just have people go, I yeah, fundamentally agree with that. <laughs> Everything is either, uh, boo, or, <laughs> <laughs> I tried to watch it, but they just go along the line, and it's boo, cheer, boo, cheer. Whatever the one is, you go, I don't really like fish. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like fish. <laughs> I don't mind the X Factor at all. My only problem with it is it's on telly. I think, but it's just the, the start of it. It's such a big build-up. You know, you have these explosions like, <laughs> and, then, and then there's all the, the judges arriving in helicopters and by speedboat, and all the names are coming down like, Doom. like biblical tablets. You have four months of that, and you end up with. Matt Cardle. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the show looks like uh, if you tuned in and you didn't, you hadn't heard of it before. You think, oh, the world's ended. Yes, yeah. <laughs> oh no, the world's ended and it's been covered on ITV. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. That's how those televised debates should have started during the election. Yeah, something like that. Big music, firework. It's David Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch it? You must watch it, yeah? Uh, to be honest with you, I've never seen an episode of The X Factor. Because you... Well, no, because... <laughs> no, it's not banned, because my wife, uh, Tess Daly, uh, <laughs> she works on... That's where I know you from. <laughs> <laughs> well, Strictly Come Dancing is on kind of before and a little bit during the X Factor. So I watch it with the kids, and then when X Factor's on, I'm putting the kids to bed. And by the time all that routine is finished, it's finished. You could video it. No. <laughs> <laughs> what I think, sorry, is that it's not as good, apparently, because there, there's no nasty judge. Like Gary Barlow, he's supposed to be the nasty one. But he just, he looks like he's just such a nice bloke. He should be judging chutneys at Billy <laughs> <laughs> It's spicy. It's spicy. It's very nice, though. I miss uh, Simon Cowell being on it, cos he really... He was horrible, and I liked that. <laughs> cos he knew that crushing people's dreams made good telly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he should have his own show called Crushing People's Dreams, where <laughs> he goes around giving people bad news, like, oh, <laughs> unfortunately, your shed's been broken into. <laughs> 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 Stuff like that. 
That's yeah. not actually a dream, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That gives you a terrifying glimpse into Joe's life there, that he's gone, my dream of my shed not being broken into. Yeah, no. Joe's dream is to have an unbroken into shed. shed four yeah. four, yeah. four yeah. times. Yeah. Really? Breaks your heart. <laughs> I have to keep me spayed in the hallway. I imagine that for a man with your facial appearance, having a spade in the hallway doesn't frighten guests at all. <laughs> I think it'd be a much better show if they got rid of the singing, just get rid of the singing, and just people got up and just told sad life stories. <laughs> yeah, I do like it. I enjoy a tragic backstory as much as the next one. What have you got man. for us this week? Uh, my nan died. Oh, that's not going to keep you on till next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, shed was broken into. You're through. <laughs> Where do you think about it? Where do all the contestants go? Because if you think about it, it's Big Brother, Britain's Got Talent, X Factor. Where are all these contestants? And I reckon in about 50 years' time, we'll find, like, a mass grave... <laughs> <laughs> ..of all the celebrity contestants. People going, oh, I've just found Michelle McManus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Well, surprisingly, that's not one of our top three talking points. But my top tip for the series, Frankie Kokoza, has the drive, certainly, but does he have the natural talent of a Sophie Habibis? Sean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Steen, what else have the nation been talking about this week? The, the Dale Farm. Mm. Oh. The evictions from Dale Farm. I turned on my television and I just saw, saw these caravans on fire and these travellers running across fields crying. I thought it was a Top Gear special. <laughs> <laughs> See Richard Hammond in a bulldozer. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and then James May in a biplane swooping <laughs> on him like that. <laughs> I'd build my own yeah. tank. Well, I could have borrowed that tunneling machine that did the Channel Tunnel, and he just comes yeah. up from underneath. Like... <laughs> I find it very difficult to see the serious side of any story in which someone gets tasered. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the ability to taser people, if you knew you could taser people and you're supposed to give a warning, you wouldn't give a proper warning, would you? <laughs> if you do not desist, I will. <laughs> <laughs> if you say what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, mate, so what, what do you think of the, uh, the Dale Farm evictions? Well, I find that all we ask of travellers is to travel. <laughs> They, cha they chained themselves to the gate, didn't they? They chained to, to the front gate, and I just thought, well, give them the gate. Everything else. But what, what I want to know is, what are the caravan club doing about this? <laughs> <laughs> Standing on the sidelines uh. watching caravans get burnt. <laughs> They're like the RSPCA for caravans. They, are. <laughs> they should be out there protecting caravans. <laughs> okay, uh, let's have a look and see where the Dale Farm is up there. Number two. Yes, the Dale Farm saga continues. Wouldn't it be an idea if instead of throwing bricks at the police, they held onto a few of them and built a house? <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, two more things to go. Oh, yeah. Go short. <laughs> Is it the collapse of the BlackBerry messaging system? That's they, had, they had what they described as a catastrophic outage. <laughs> I had one of those once after a reheated prawn curry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on Blackberry, so I, don't, I didn't experience any of the tragedy that befell <laughs> millions of people where they couldn't go, I'm in the bath. <laughs> it seems quite serious. It was pretty bad. I mean, it went down for three, yeah, three days, no Blackberry. It's not massively it... serious, is it, when you sum it up? Ooh. It's not. It's a very first world problem. Limited web surfing capability for three. <laughs> but like Africa are watching the news going, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we should do something because they cannot see someone and go, oh, what was he in? Mm. <laughs> Knackered. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a bit mad, though, isn't it? Where, cos, yeah, three days without email. I remember when the height of technology was like a calculator on your ruler. <laughs> 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 I can't believe...
believe they put it on a ruler. Well, you've said, you've said <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 when you had a watch with a light. <laughs> the thing. Apparently, apparently. <laughs> I find the Blackberry, I, I haven't got one, but I find oh. the annoying thing about them is when people have got Blackberries, because now people talk about Blackberries and, and Apple phones as if they're the Beatles and the Stones, or mods and rockers, they're really, it's tribal. Mm. And people with Blackberries always go, yeah, it's better for email, though. But on my phone, I can send and receive email. I don't know how much better it gets. <laughs> <laughs> That's the weird thing is, they're rivals, you know, the Apple, Blackberry, but in a crumble, they're harmony. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see what the Blackberry is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, the Blackberry email system failed several times in the past week. You'd have thought Steve Jobs' ghost would have had better things to do. <laughs> <laughs> right, fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. John's team. Well, there's been a parliamentary probe this week. Another one. It's got Liam Fox into a lot of trouble. There is this weird thing that's got, it's sort of the unsaid thing in the paper, isn't it? That uh, Adam Werity and uh, Liam Fox have been uh, doing it. It's more that they got to a point where they tried to report it as a news story, because it's a big news story that, you know, someone's been gaining access to Parliament, basically, and lobbying for arms deals that he has nothing to do with. And they tried to report all that, and people went, eh. And then in the middle of the week, they just went, and they might be doing it with each other. Are they saying it overtly, though, the press? No. So, yeah. There's a rumour that Liam Fox is gay, but he's denied it and he's a married man, so... Especially what do you make of this? It. What do you make of Liam Fox resigning? Well, what I... Uh, I don't know. What I find funny about it is that, uh, <laughs> Is the, uh, de <laughs> <laughs> Is the Defence Secretary has got himself in a situation where his friend is a non-executive director of a so-called charitable organisation which has been funded by right-wing American businessmen, <laughs> while at the same time, right, he's, <laughs> oh, dear, he's posing as uh, an advisor to the MOD while pursuing his own paid lobbying agenda. I mean, stuff like that, you can't make it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was laughing about it with the wife this morning. I was going, oh, can you believe what they did? I mean, the more you think about it, the more you just go, ha, ha, ha! <laughs> 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 Something new comes on. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it's, he's a flamboyant man in his fifties. He wants to go away. He wants he's to take a friend. He's along. He's but bringing a friend on holiday, oh, staying in the same hotel. Where's the Where's the problem there? But the thing is, you don't bring your friends to work unless you're a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a well-known role. It's a plumber's mate. There's no well-known role as hello. What do you do? I'm a defence secretary's mate. <laughs> 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 Just help him get stuff from the van. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, do you think they ever had a chat and, and, and said to each other, listen, you come with me, we'll have a bit of a laugh, we'll go around the world, we'll set up a company, we'll get on the blag, we'll get a little bit of this, a little bit of that, we'll get away with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just weird, it's bizarre. They That's must it. have had that conversation at some stage, they must I would have. imagine. They don't apologise, do they? The Tories, they're very good at using every... It's like a long speech in which Was... not once did he say, I done it, <laughs> soz. <laughs> and he started off by saying, I just wanted to know that last week I saw a man whose kids were dead. So let's get this in perspective. Yeah, that was that was incredible. <laughs> if you get busted at work, you're not allowed to do that. I just want to know. Someone got stabbed in town last night. So... <laughs> Cameron said that he uh, resigned with dignity, didn't he? Mm. Which really annoys me. I want to see one go mental, <laughs> <laughs> smash his office up, you know, call Cameron a wanker, and then shit in his yucca plant. <laughs> 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 Let's have a look and see whether Liam Fox is up there. <laughs> so those were the most talked about stories this week. But in other news, Steps are at the top of the album chart having announced they're reforming. All they need now is to find a mutually convenient time when all of the bandmates are available. Basically, they've got to choose between tomorrow and every other day in the future. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Sean, Joe and Vernon have two points. John, Lovely. Rachel and Tim have one. That's it for part one. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 counts. Our next round is Pick of the Polls. John, Rachel, Tim, what do you want to answer a question on? Can we have the lady with the knife and fork? She looks angry about what's about to happen, and I want to find out why. <laughs> OK, all right. Well, your related question, OK? Worst thing on a date, a fussy eater or someone who drinks too much? If they're a fussy eater, you can just eat their food. Done. I'm happy. 
<laughs> See, that would be a good thing for your positive That would be thing. fine, as long as they actually go to the restaurant to start with, because I did go out with someone that would only eat, um, like, yellow stuff. <laughs> when I was young, you'd only eat, like, chicken nuggets and chips, so... So you'd go out to a restaurant and go, do you have anything yellow? <laughs> <laughs> You go to a, a custard house. <laughs> <laughs> what of London's very fine custard houses? <laughs> How many dates did you have with this guy? I went out with him for three years. What? <laughs> John, are you a No, no, I'm, I'm fairly, uh, fairly easy going. It's the drinking that concerns me. They have to drink. <laughs> Especially on a date where it's yeah. awkward anyway. You don't want someone I who's going to remember non -drinkers it. Non-drinkers are difficult. <laughs> I, I, I respect their decision to not drink, but... It, it makes life very, very hard. It's like having a different religion. It's fine, they can crack on with it, but I don't want to be with them, so... <laughs> <laughs> I find a heavy drinker on a date very much a positive. Mm. <laughs> well, if they're hammered, I'm, um, you know... Yeah. <laughs> It's a clincher. Yeah. It, the men might try and push drinks on the women, but if the woman can't really do anything with the drunk man. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> I the stag do once to Edinburgh, right? With the, with, uh, the, the, the stag was a very, very dear friend of mine. And this is a prime example of alcohol makes you go over the line, right? We're watching the FA Cup final between Liverpool and Arsenal. Half time, we're all sat around having a couple of pints. My mate turns around and says, It's boring this, isn't it? I'm like, Yeah, pretty much. Give me five minutes. And he went upstairs and he, and he came down in his dressing gown with a can of deodorant. And he just got on the microphone, you know, like they do in a local pub. Went, Ladies and gentlemen, the human fireball! And he sprayed himself in deodorant and lit it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got the, 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 the belt from the robe. I would, the human fireball would like to introduce to you the helicopter. So he got the, the belt from his, uh, his, his dressing gown, wrapped it around his penis, and then pulled it really fast, and his willy went... <laughs> Before we agreed we were never going to talk about this, aren't we? <laughs> so then, what alcohol does, it, it, it brings out the competition element of the male. <laughs> so what happened next was, that another friend said, well, watch this, everyone give me your coppers. So everyone coppered up, you know, like, you won't know about that because you're posh. So everyone put, like, <laughs> the pennies in and the two peas. He put 83 pence in pennies down his foreskin. And then he started coughing, and they all individually dropped out. <laughs> now, that's a party trick. <laughs> How did he find out he could do that? Because he was drunk, Jimmy! <laughs> sure, it wasn't Darren <laughs> Brown, Stag <laughs> OK, all right, so what's worse on a date, a fussy eater or someone who drinks too much? We're going to go fussy eater... Booze. <laughs> someone who will only eat booze. <laughs> We're going for someone who drinks too much. OK. Sean, what are you going to go for? Uh, uh, probably heavy drinking is worse. I can tell you, you are right. Yes! Yes! 63% of people said someone who drinks too much is worse than a fussy eater. I think a fussy eater is worse. If she won't put that in her mouth, she's not going to like what I've got planned for dessert. <laughs> oh, this tastes of coppers. <laughs> And the win is, is the name of our final round. Here's your question. Top reason people are jealous of their friends? Um, I've got a mate who works at a Marmite factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's always a talk of the town, so... Yeah. Yeah. Some people love him, some people... Yeah. <laughs> no, we all love him. Too <laughs> 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 soon. I'm jealous of is uh, Joe's beard. I can't grow a beard. Me neither. Uh, I can't. And uh, if I, if two weeks, I just look like a sort of, you know, really old tennis ball. Patchy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and bits there. I'd like, I mean, you could just probably knock that out in a couple of hours, can you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're looking at that through rose tinted glasses, though, because Joe can't go to playgrounds, for example. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a mate who lives right opposite the station. <laughs> yeah. You can oh. see the trains coming in. Oh. Living the dream. Yeah. Living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I've 
I've got a mate. You're going to hate this with a padlock on his shed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous of my friend who can get 82p up his foreskin. <laughs> I can beat him. I can put a pound down there. <laughs> <laughs> What do you, are you jealous of any of your friends? I can't get up in the morning and I'm just a really lazy person. I'm jealous of her for not having to get up in the morning. <laughs> there you go. Sleep until midday, lovely. <laughs> we there? Really lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous of anyone with a foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, that was different, that's yeah, not yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 you were, though. You'd be the world's number one tranny, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you would be an amazing tranny. Yeah. So you've got to have a dream. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is it. I just don't know how to talk to women. I would never think to say that to a lady. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it with women. You watch it done, and you think, oh, yeah. Woman, so you're so be... beautiful. You'd make an amazing tranny. It's <laughs> 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 really ironic coming from Tim, I think. Yeah, you have slightly the demeanour of the world's worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, should, I just always forget to show. No, it. here's the world's worst. <laughs> I can do something which will make you all jealous, especially Joe. Look, I can do this. Whoa! Forget Joe, that's amazing! <laughs> Is that the Olympic symbol? What? <laughs> Joe. Yeah. He's just trying to make sure I <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Look at the amount of people in our audience currently going. Yeah. 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 Do you start yeah. from the little yeah. one and work forward? Yeah. If you've just tuned well, in, go we've got momentum. Okay, so top reason people are jealous of their friends. I'll give you a clue, it's a really superficial thing. Yeah, it'll yeah. be money or yeah. having a hot girlfriend boyfriend. Hair's not far off. Hair yeah, looks. Looks. Money. Looks. Noses. Money. Car. Arms. <laughs> Skinnier is the right answer. What? what? She got the right Skinnier. answer. Skinnier. Skinnier. Yeah, that's... Apparently the top reason people are jealous of their friends is because they're thinner. Victoria Beckham so thin, she's got to be careful when she has a bath, because if the water's too hot, she could turn into stock. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Joe and Vernon have three points and John, Rachel and Tim have three points, which means it's a draw. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. If you want more, tune in tomorrow night for 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut. That's it from us. Good night.